Hi, my name is Burl Miller. I work with Spray Poly Parts here in Panama City, Florida. Today I'll be giving a class on the Fusion AP gun. We will take it apart, disassemble it, uh, go over methods for cleaning, and then reassemble the gun. This is a Fusion AP gun. The AP stands for Air Purge. It is a plural component, air operated spray gun. Before we begin, I would like to go over some of the safety aspects of the Fusion gun. This, what I have in my hand, is an actual card that you would hand to the paramedics in case of accidental ingestion or impingement under the skin or just uh, you know, accidentally shooting yourself in the face. It's very important. It's one of the most important things that you have in this kit because it can save your life. Always keep this in the trailer or on your persons or in your wallet or wherever you feel most comfortable, but always have it with you when you're out spraying. This is a Fusion AP gun. The AP stands for Air Purge. It is a plural component, air operated spray gun. And we will start taking it apart and show you the cleaning of it, the disassembly and the, uh, putting it back together. The first component that you take off of the gun is the air cap and it just simply unscrews. Sometimes after you've been spraying, it can be a little tight to take off, but if you use your screwdriver and go between the flats that's on each side of the air cap, it's easy to take off. But you'll notice that it is cut at an angle because they do not want you to use a screwdriver to tighten it. They want it just hand tight, but the flats are so you can take it loose. Also, the air cap has air that comes to it. And if you look on the inside here, there is a little groove that goes all the way around the inside of it. From the bottom side, when you pull the trigger, air is diverted to the air cap and comes through on these four little holes that are perpendicular to each other every 90 degrees. That air comes to the front of the gun and actually is used to contain overspray. It is not for the pattern. It is mainly for overspray. And we will get into the adjustment of it because if you have too much air, it will create overspray. If you have none, it will not contain the overspray. The next component that we will remove is called the ring cover. It simply unscrews. And if in your prior assembly, you have made sure that you have put in grease around the threads, it will easily come off. There's not much to the ring cover. It simply compresses the side seal cartridges to form the seal on the side of the mixing chamber. There's not much to it. You have one O-ring here in the top, a Teflon O-ring, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Next, we will be taking the side seal cartridges out. You'll notice that you have a little uh, machined out place here that you can easily get the screwdriver that's supplied in the kit, get it to pop loose. Now, if you have trouble, once you've done that, you can use a larger screwdriver to pull it out. You don't have to stay with the little one that came with the kit. And you see this one's brand new, it hasn't been used. The grease is still very fresh. Okay. As you can see, it has four holes that the fluid feeds into the side seal cartridge. Inside of this is a spring, and as you know, springs are helical. So there's one point that you can insert the screwdriver in underneath one of the, the uh, uh, underneath the spring that will actually give you enough uh, lift that you can pop the side seal out of the cartridge. You do not, under any circumstances, ever want to grab this with a pair of pliers and force it out because you will destroy the surface of this and it will not seat and you'll have to buy a new one. So, you see that? I hit it on the right one right off the bat. You see the O-ring that goes around it. It's 
the number 10, and then you have the spring. Springs should be replaced about every year to two years. Once they begin to lose their tension, they will not hold the side seal tight enough to the mixing chamber and it'll begin to leak. You'll know this when you rebuild your gun and it only lasts a day or two. That's a sure sign of when you need to replace your springs. And also when you're cleaning this, you'll see on the inside there's a little groove. That is where the O-ring actually loads into the cartridge. You need to make sure that is clean when you disassemble your gun and clean it. So now we'll take out the D side. And that's something that I forgot to mention to you. There's actually an A and a B side so that you can keep these separated. You'll notice on the bottom of the side seal cartridge, there's an A. And here on the side of the gun, there's also laser etched an A, so that you can keep the two components separate. It's not really a big problem if you disassemble the gun in a shop and run your parts to a cleaner, because they're actually exactly identical parts. But where this is necessary is in the field. When you disassemble the gun and you cannot run it through a parts cleaner, you have to keep them separated because if you put the A and the B and the B and the A, the gun is going to foam up and lock up and will not spray. So, next we'll take out the, side, or the check valves. And as you can see, it's marked as well as the side seal cartridge. There is an A there. The B is not marked, but that's how you know it's a B. If it don't have an A on it, then it's a B. This is the screen, and as you notice, the fluid actually comes in through this check valve, through the inside of it, and you can see I'm depressing it, you can see the ball moving on the inside of it with the spring. So that means all of the debris and, and whatever, trash or whatever, will be caught on the inside of the cartridge, not on the outside. So sometimes, if you go too long between, between cleaning them, It'll pack in here so tight that you cannot get this screen off. So the only thing that you can do is take a knife or something and safely split this and then you'll be able to remove it. And of course you'll have to put a new screen on it. Uh, new fusion guns come with an 80 mesh screen, which is the smallest one they make. Uh, you can go a larger screen so that it doesn't clog up as quick. Depending on the size mixing chamber that you have, if you're running a AR-5252, you can go with a 40 mesh screen because the particles that will go through a 40 mesh screen will not stop up the impingement ports on the mixing chamber. Normally, I'm going to disassemble this, but normally you don't. You just take off the O-rings and you can put it in the parts cooker. But so that you know how to disassemble it, I'm going to show you. Of course it's under a spring. You can see that's your screw guide. There's your spring and of course here's the check ball that works in the other end of the gun. It's very simple to reassemble. Just put that in, put your screen on top of it, and then put the guide through the middle of the spring. The easiest way to restart these is take your thumb, hold tension, and just rotate it. And most time, it will start straight. And also, there is a slight adjustment that you want to do. You do not want to screw this all the way down to the bottom. You want to have it where the surface is just below the level of the check valve cartridge. You can feel it's just slightly indented there. That will give you the best pattern. If you screw this all the way down to the bottom, it will change your pattern. And, and it's not a good pattern. So definitely 
just barely below the surface of the check valve. Next, we'll take out the B side. Sometimes these can be a little difficult if they've been in the gun for a long time. The O-rings will seize up to the side of the, uh, the fluid housing and it's a little difficult, but with a little extra time and patience, it'll come out easily. And it's the same thing, both screens. Some people use a different size screen on okay, one side and we're gonna move on to the fluid housing. On the fluid housing, as I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the air cap, there's actually a adjustment for that air. When it comes to the factory, usually they have it tightened all the way down and this one is that way. So you wanna pop it loose and then screw it back down lightly till it's closed. Using your thumb as a guide, as an index, you wanna turn it 90 degrees and then just a little bit more. So you're actually you're doing about three eighths of a turn. That is usually about the best airflow for your containment of the overspray. I'll go ahead and take it out so that you can see it. Then we'll readjust it when we put it back together. Very simple design. It's got a no ring on it and it's a tapered nose so that it can control the airflow. Also on the fluid housing, you have a cap that covers your grease fitting. Now Fusion AP is a unique gun in that at the end of the day, you simply close your valves and shoot two pumps of grease, no more than two because too much grease in it can actually affect the behavior of the gun. It'll, it'll won't last as long. You would think more grease would be better, but it's not. And it also comes out with the same nut driver. You want to make sure that you always keep this grease cover on your grease fitting. Because if you leave it off, uh, you can get dirt and debris and also, if the ball gets jammed inside the grease fitting, it can allow air to come back out of the grease fitting and also grease. And it will lower the air pressure inside of your gun, which you do not want. Okay, next we'll move on to taking the actual housing itself off. Very simply, it just screws to the side. This is your mixing chamber. And as you can see, it's loosely cut in there that it, so that it can move around. It will fit whatever, if you have a spring on one side of the gun that's a little looser, it will allow it to move around to fit the best possible, yeah, screw that up. It'll allow it to move around so that it compensates for the spring pressures. As you can see, it's cut at an angle simply goes in like this and you can see it can rotate. It can spin completely around 180 degrees, 360 degrees. Let me get it back out of there. Okay. The fluid manifold is pretty much basic. There's not a lot of parts to it. I do want to take out the O-ring that goes around the air cap because it doesn't look like it's the correct O-ring. When you're going through your O-ring kit and, and you want to install the new one, you'll have trouble finding it most times. As you can see, the O-ring looks bigger than the one that you would need. If you're digging through an O-ring kit, you wouldn't think that's the correct one, but it is. The easiest way to Reinstall it is to squeeze it together, get it to go into the groove. I'm going to do this in two seconds and just work your way around. And once it's in there, take your finger and go around and make sure it's seated in the o ring groove. And also, there's one on the bottom side. This is what actually seals the fluid section to the handle. And it's fairly simple to take out. I'll go ahead and reinstall it. A 
that's it. Nothing to it. Next, we will remove and disassemble the safety section of the gun. Also, I'd like to add that anytime that you're transporting the gun through the house, always put your safety on. Anytime you're dragging hose through a roof deck, always put your safety on because you never know. You can actually pull the gun into a stud or anything like that and cause it to start spraying. Uh, if you're handing your gun down through a roof to a, a fellow worker, make sure the safety's on for his sake because it is not fun being shot in the face with a gun. Okay. Next, we'll push out the air cylinder. There is not a lot with the air cylinder. You can see they've got a lot of grease on it. About the only problems that you'll have with the gun is usually if, if someone hasn't been greasing it and running a long time, it'll start to pop. And if you're not careful, if you have your hoses running out the back of your gun, if you uh, drop it down through a roof after a day of spring and you let it fall, the first thing it's going to hit is the air cap, which is in line with this. I've actually seen these shoved through the center of this air cap. So you want to take extra, extra precaution that when you lower it through the roof, you don't drop it. Next is the trigger spool. And it has a spring underneath of it, so when you take it apart, be careful that it doesn't pop out. It's not that much of a spring, but still, there's nothing worse than losing one and right in the middle of a job. When you take the trigger spool out, the easiest way is to pull the trigger so that the spool goes back as far as it can. Then using the yellow screwdriver that came with your kit, line it up on the spool itself. And be careful that when you're pushing the spool through the center of the handle, you don't want to hit the edges of it. trigger spool is actually hollow. Air flows through the center of the trigger spool and is distributed out through these two little holes. And I have a cutaway that I'm going to explain it a little more in detail how it works. I have an aftermarket trigger spool here that's got a little bit larger holes in it so that I can illustrate this a little better. But as you see, the trigger spool goes in just like this. So that when it's sitting static, you have air actually flowing through the trigger. That's your clean off air for your mixing chamber. And plus, you have also air that is flowing in the back that's pushing your cylinder forward. When you pull the trigger, you can see the holes line up. That then applies air to the front of the air cylinder, pushing it back, which pulls the mixing chamber and lines them up with the side seals. And that's how it actually sprays. When you let off the trigger, it goes back forward again. Air is diverted to the back side, which shoves the cylinder forward so it no longer sprays. We're going to disassemble the safety cap, but for the video, we usually don't take apart the one that's on the gun. We have a, a prop or, or a spare one because you have to put blue Loctite on the threads so that it doesn't come apart on you while you're operating it in the field. It's fairly simple. You just unscrew it. which you have one o-ring on it so that when you're rebuilding it you know that that o-ring is there it has a spring and on the inside it actually has the lock and if you'll notice it's cut flat on one side so that it can sit on the top of the cover this assemble is very easy you just put it in these screws right here 
go ahead on from the other side, put your spring in, and then push your safety down through it and just start it. Here's where you'd want to apply the blue Loctite. Once you get it pushed through like that, you put the blue Loctite on and then start it. And then center it into little square cutouts and then finish turning it till it's tight. It's a very good idea to put the blue Loctite on there because a lot of times when you're working, you're not paying attention and you go to change your safety to put it on or take it off and you'll turn it the wrong way. And if you don't have the blue Loctite on the threads, you actually will unscrew it and disassemble it without, without knowing it. So that's the reason why we didn't take this one apart because it's already got the Loctite in it. As you can see, that's how the safety works. Here, it is disengaged. That will allow the air cylinder to move the full travel so that it aligns the mixing chamber so that it sprays. Here, as you can see, it's higher up and it won't allow the air cylinder to come back far enough to engage so it will not spray. The very last thing, once you've disassembled your gun and you're down to this point where your handle is bare, because you make sure that you don't have your trigger spool in, you want to purchase a 1 8 inch by 6 inch long drill bit and you'll come in from the bottom. Usually you'll either have a plug and a muffler. This doesn't have either, obviously it's been removed, but anyway, you want to take your eighth inch drill bit and come up through here, and as you can see, it will go through the trigger spool where it, where it rides at and come up here. This is actually a, a newer housing, as you can see right here. Uh, when Graco first started making these, they would only come in just far enough. They wouldn't drill past it. So when you came in from this way and this way, it would leave a little bit of material here and it was very hard to clean out. They've since changed that, that they drill in further and it makes your, uh, your drill bit, when you insert it, it goes further in there and cleans it better. Also, your, for your piston, for your air piston, is in the back, comes in from the back side of it. Same 1 8 inch drill bit run down through here on both of them. It will not go into the spool, so don't force it. And, and do these by hand. Do not use a drill because, I mean, you can drill through this. This is 6061 aluminum, and you can drill through it very easily. So be very careful when you're doing this.